Okay, we are ready. Uh, oh, wait, just one moment. I've got somebody trying to contact me. Hold on a sec. Okay, actually, we're, we should be good. If I need to do some uh, sending out some information during this thing, we'll, we'll do it as we go. But Sister Watkins, if you want to give us an opening prayer, that'd be awesome. Dear kind of gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day and we're thankful for the opportunity we have to gather together as seminary and institute teachers to, to discuss this upcoming year and to be able to hear the messages which Brother Hadley has prepared for us to help us be better teachers of thy word and to help the students draw closer unto thee. We pray for thy spirit to be with us and to edify us and to fill our hearts with love for these Students will be teaching. We love thee so much, Father in heaven, and these students we pray for humbly in thy son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, uh, thank you everybody for participating in this little chat today. I'm uh, I'm checking a couple of different things as I as I uh, go through this. I'm just looking at where everybody's from and and. Uh, some of the time that you've been teaching it's pretty cool we got people from all over the place and lots of different uh sister larson where are yes you? Uh, i'm i don't know i'm here <laughs> can you see me <laughs> i'm looking i'm Destroy looking a key. <laughs> well it's nice to have you with us you uh 16 nice. years is anybody been be here longer than 16 years That is amazing. Sister Larson, didn't you and I start at the same time? Uh, possibly. Yeah, you came after Jared, I think. Oh, Jared was Jared here for one Halverson. year. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I think you were right after him. That's right. Uh, wow. That is crazy. I can't believe it's been that long. It's been long. a while. <laughs> well, I just really appreciate everybody joining us today. Um, I'm going to invite you to do something. This is in part because I, I am testing this out to see how it goes. Um, and also because I want to get some information from you. If you can, if you can see this, um, I want you to go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. You can do this on your phone too, or a tablet if you, if you don't want to take up your computer screen to do this. But if you go to menti.com and you use that code that you can see, um, I want you to respond to that following question. I'm gonna make sure that this is ready for all of you. What word would you use to describe how you're feeling about teaching seminary this year? And you can share up to three of them. Now? You can do it now. It'll take you a moment to get there, but. Brother Hadley, you have to put a space between those, all those numbers? Uh, no, or you just, don't. Okay. It's cool you guys can see, should be able to see. If you can't, let, let me do this. Oh, one second, I have, you keep doing that, I'm gonna catch a quick phone call. <laughs> Somebody's trying to get in.
Okay, that was funny. I had some people that are trying to get information to connect because the uh, the link was giving them problems. So I think we've got it now, hopefully. And you guys uh, are telling me that you can't see. I'm going to stop this share and see if I can share with you what I see. So Lamenti, it's kind of interesting. Okay, can you guys see that? The oh, yes. word cloud? Yes. Awesome. <clears throat> so there's two reasons why I want to do this. One, because I, I think this is a really fun tool to be able to use in class if you want to uh, change things up a little bit. It's just a word cloud that you can use at menti.com. And, and, uh, and then when you show it, you do a presentation, you do presentation mode. And then they can see what uh, what they've included there, and it's interesting to see what words are the ones that are used the most. And obviously, you see "excited" at the very middle. It's interesting to see all of the different feelings that uh, you guys are experiencing right now. And you know, as we go through these trainings, I think sometimes that's those words may change a little bit. Maybe you'll become a little bit more optimistic or um, a little more hopeful, maybe a little more stressed, hopefully not. Um, but either way, I want you to just think about, um, you know, the reason why we do these trainings is because we want to try and, and uh, give you guys an, um, an abundance of resources to be able to feel a lot, lot more uh, comfortable about going into the classroom. So, and I wanted to share something else with you. I'm going to stop this share if I can, now that you've seen that, um, and share with you something else. Here we go. So you are obviously familiar with this. Our, our, this is our, uh, our objective. And I think it's important for us to keep our eye on the ball, so to speak, every time that we do training, every time we go into class. And uh, so this, this is one of those things that I try and bring up and, and put in front of me constantly, even though I, I have it memorized, which I would encourage all of you to, to memorize if you can. Um, and I, Brother Woodruff, would you mind uh, reading that for us? Our purpose is to help youth and young adults understand and rely on the teachings and atonement of Jesus Christ qualify for the blessings of the temple and prepare themselves, their families, and others for eternal life with their father in heaven. Okay, Brother Woodruff, you need to be the voice of children's books right there. That's absolutely <laughs> perfect. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for, for reading that. Um, and we can take some time to talk about that. But the one thing that I, we're not going to do that today, but but I just wanted to, to point out today that um, you know, this is our, this is what we're trying to do. We're not trying to teach lessons. We're not trying to convert uh, students because that's not our job. Um, we're, we're trying to, our purpose is to help youth and young adults understand and rely on the teachings and atonement of Jesus Christ. 
And then as we do that, they'll, they'll be more qualified for the blessings of the temple and prepare themselves for eternal life with their father in heaven. Um, so as we do that today, we're going to be talking about some very specific things uh, to help us with that. The, you'll notice that um, if you had an opportunity to listen to uh, President Uchtdorf's or Elder Uchtdorf's uh, training on teaching in the Savior's way, he mentioned five different things that uh, these are five different areas of focus that we are encouraged to give attention to. And you can see those there. Focus on Jesus Christ. Love those you teach. Teach by the Spirit. Teach the doctrine and invite diligent learning. So those are all broken up into different sections, um, there, <clears throat> and that's what this summer training is focused on, are those different, those five different areas. And if you want to simplify it even more, um, it's basically Christ-centered, student-focused, scripture-based, spirit-directed teaching. That's a mouthful, but that's what we're, we're trying to do. And it's kind of difficult to, you know, if you're talking about student-focused, that's a challenge if it's student focused and scripture based and you walk in with a lesson plan that you've got every bullet point set that what you want to share and how you want this to go, then it's really not student focused if you're just going through a presentation, so to speak. Um, it's not necessarily, I mean, it might be spirit directed in terms of what you've prepared, but more so than that, um, and obviously we can do Christ-centered the same way, but more so than that, if we want student-focused and scripture-based teaching, then we need to lead them that way. And that's one of the reasons why today's, um, the, today's topic is to guide the students. Um, we, we're <laughs> guiding them into doing certain things, and, and today specifically... Uh, let me pull this up right here. I guess maybe you guys can't see that. But specifically today, we're, we're trying to guide learners or talk about guiding learners in, in learning how to seek for and act upon personal revelation. And uh, you've got, gone through several other um, different trainings this summer that kind of help you through different pieces of this. But uh, I want you to watch a little video. Hopefully this works from President Nelson, and then I'm going to get your reaction from it. So um, if you have something to jot some things down on, also, if you have your, your mics, if you may, want to make sure that they're muted while we're uh, going through this, then we won't get some feedback as well. But listen to this, and then let's get your reaction from what he said about personal revelation. In the scriptures, there are very few sacred instances in which the voice of God the Father has been heard. So when he says something, we really need to listen. Repeatedly, he has personally introduced his beloved son, Jesus Christ, with a specific charge to hear him. Have you ever stopped to ask why? Why is our Heavenly Father so insistent and consistent in his plea that we should hear his beloved Son, Jesus Christ? Jesus answered this question himself. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Our Father loves us and yearns for each one of us to choose to return to his holy presence. He pleads with us to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ whom the Father anointed and appointed as our mediator, savior, and redeemer. In this special year, as we commemorate the 200th anniversary of the first vision, I invite you to think deeply and often about this key question. How do you hear him? I also invite you to take steps to hear him better and more often. Now, as one of the Lord's special witnesses, I bless you in your efforts to get on and stay on his covenant path and strive with all your heart, might, mind, and soul to hear him.
Okay. I would love for you guys to do something for me. Just go to the chat and jot down uh, a brief thought about what you heard. Now, notice I didn't say what he said. I want you to jot down what you heard. Take a moment and read through some of the others that you that are on the chat after you've included what you what your response was. While you're writing those down, I just have a few questions about a few, a couple of these uh, responses. Um, let's see. Hold on one second. Okay, so I sis, is it brother or sister Marshall? I'm looking for you. Oh, it's both of you. <laughs> I see you now, Roy and Kathleen Marshall. Can you guys unmute yourselves? Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just wondering, it, you, it, your response was it's not complicated. We just have to do it and hear him better. Would you mind just um, expounding on that a little bit? Maybe clarifying how to do that in your view? What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are follow the covenant path and uh, the simple things that we're asked to do, pay tithing, teach our children. Um, Read the scriptures, say our prayers and be... <laughs> be very personable in our prayers, be uh, specific and uh, just, just just do it. I mean, it's, it's what, like President Kimball said, just do it. Lay down some of the world. Mm. Lay down some of the world. I, I love how you just say, just do it. Um, <laughs> I've tried that on my teenage daughter and uh, sometimes it sticks, but um, a lot of times, you know, I'm just like, how hard is this? Let's just do it. Um, that's really what this is about, you know, guiding our students to be able to do this. And I'd, I'd love to get some of your thoughts on that here in just a couple of minutes. But before I do that, I think it's probably important for us to identify how it works for us. Um, these responses are awesome. I, I wish that, uh, you know, it'd be easier for us to just clip those out and send them to everybody. Maybe we can, maybe I'll find a way. I, um, I did an exercise with my kids where I wanted them, we, we made a list on the board. I said, identify as many ways as you can think of to hear him. And they came up with on their own, a list of 19 different ways. And I was really, it was, it was amazing. And then to, to take it one step further, I said, go back in the scriptures and see if you can find me a scripture that goes with every one of these methods. And we ran out of class time, but they got to 12 before we ran out of class time. 
Um, and I think they were surprised by their own list. I was. What a great idea. This is something that we're going to have an opportunity to do right at the very beginning of class. In that first week, there's a chance to be able to spend some time on identifying, you know, how the spirit works and, and, um, and basically how we can learn from the Holy Ghost. That is a great activity. Something like that would be a marvelous activity on how to do that. Um, okay. So I would suggest right now that you, um, I'm going to invite you to do something because I, I think it's important for us to do the same thing. Now, this isn't going to quite be exactly what Julie suggested there, but it's going to be something similar. You're, I want you to go back to menti.com. And so hold on a second and see, I'm going to see if I can pull this up for all of you. And there's a second slide that I want you to to use. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. And I need to share that. Hold on. Okay. Sir, can I, uh, I, I also wanted to add that uh, even with our own children, as we um, follow what we've been asked to do. And even when we're instructing and, and guiding our children, you know, if we're, we continue to go back to the same process, they'll finally get the picture whether or not they want it. So are you talking about the desire that they have? I'm talking about when you're trying, when they're struggling and not and having problems because they're not following as long as we can pull them back and, and go back through the process so that they can learn that it works. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why I think it's important for us not to just think that we've done this one time and we've trained them. This is something that we need to be doing constantly so that they practice it so that then they get an opportunity to not just experience personal revelation, but that they can identify it and they know exactly how that works in their lives. They have a chance to share it as well. This is one way, this is just one exercise that you can do to uh, help them to understand because everybody, as you, as you will notice here in just a moment, I'll share this with you. to do a new share. <clears throat> Are you guys able to see the, let's see, where'd that go? Are you done? Are you guys able to see the, the question and the responses? Yes. Okay. This awesome. is really cool. What's that? This is really cool. It's, it is great, isn't it? Because it, one of the things that it does is when you do this in a classroom environment, everybody gets to see their responses. Now, it, it's anonymous, so it makes it a little bit easier for, for students to share um, and not feel like that they're going to get the wrong answer. That's the selling point on that. Because mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about putting a big piece piece of paper on the wall and then having them write all of this stuff, but not everybody has the cell phone either. Yeah, um, that's really key is for them to be able to do it on their phone. Did you get the question? Yeah, the question is at the top there. I think this is great for those who don't like to speak out, mm -hmm. but they have ideas. They're just don't want to say they're afraid to speak. Yes. Yeah, it's it, it it gives everybody a platform to share. Yeah. I just think it's cool too to be able to see all of the different responses. I feel joy and uplifted. My mind feels enlightened and I see things with clarity. 
confirmation that my heavenly father knows me individually. I feel enlightened, happy, and excited. And it's interesting too, you know how sometimes you feel, sometimes you'll feel the spirit one way at a certain point and another way at another instance. And like for me, sometimes a lot of times it's like walking out into the sun. It just feels comfortable. Um, and just like, ah, you just feel like sitting down and letting the sun hit you for a while. And other times it just generates enthusiasm in me where I want to go get something done. And a lot, of, a lot of times that's what happens with our students is that they feel like it's, a, it's motivating for them. And they, wouldn't, they won't necessarily understand that if we don't help them to make those connections. So I would love to spend some more time just kind of discussing some of these here. What are your thoughts too, is not just about what we are using here, but what are your thoughts <clears throat> about helping your students be able to do this kind of activity? I kind of identify with the person who wrote, um, yep, it worked again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know why at my age, I'm still often surprised that I get an answer um, or that I get one with clarity or it's useful or that the process continues to work. Like I'm afraid it's not gonna work this time. Um, probably because I've had to struggle and wait for some answers. And so um, if I can help my students have some confidence when they are either not in tune to the answer they're getting or that it's worth the effort to keep struggling until they get their answer, that, that the intent is not broken, that there is something coming in. I think that is a worthy goal. Mm. Great thought. Any other thoughts that come to mind? Go ahead, Darcy. We've been told a hundred times, no involvement, no commitment, and this is involvement. This is the putting it into practice mm. so that they can gain experience doing that very thing. So let me ask you this question, and it may be obvious, but I'd still like to know what your thoughts are. Why do you think it's important for students to know how to seek for and act on personal revelation? Sister Blue? Oh, you got to unmute yourself. Sorry. I was going to ask, how do we use this format, this new menti.com? Because I think that is wonderful because I have students who really don't like to share a lot, but that would give them that platform where they would feel comfortable to do so. So if you just go to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you just go to menti.com, uh, there's a little tutorial there to help you to walk through. It's very simple to be able to do that. And uh, I would just invite you to practice a little bit, you know, just to see how this goes. I, I, this is one of those tools that I've used in Institute and, and, uh, and even used it at FSY recently when I was directing a session. And, and it, was, uh, it was pretty incredible to be able to get the kind of in responses out of them. And, and believe it or not, it helped to generate a personal revelation for a lot of them just because they had an, an opportunity to, to see what else other people were saying and then recognize that they were actually feeling some of those feelings. So Sister Coles, you had your hand up. Yes, I have to apologize. I have a two and a three-year-old down here below me. So that's okay. Um, uh, it might be a little noisy, but I, your question, why is it important for students to know and to seek for an act on personal revelation? And I think um, it's just so important to teach them to be spiritually independent and resilient. And I think, you know, if, if I could only do that in a seminary semester, I feel like I would be successful. Even if they didn't remember anything else, if they knew how to find their own personal revelation and know how to do that, how to act on it, boy, that's, that's a skill I think we all need to continue to work on. But to me, that's, that's such an important thing to do. Like it's the main thing in my mind. Love it. Thank you very much. Is it Sister Ford? Who's on the iPhone? Let's see. Sister Word? 
Oh, sorry, oh. Sister Word. Thank you. It doesn't show your name up there. Oh, I got bumped out and I came back on. I forgot to rename. Oh, myself. that's okay. I thank okay. you very much. Yeah, go ahead. What were you going to share? Well, I had because I'm new. I have a question that um, a, a question for you pertaining to all of this. We're doing all these, I mean, amazing things with this mentee, but how do you keep these kids from going on Facebook and Instagram because they're on their phone? How, what do you, how do you handle that? Well, if you're okay with that, if with this, let's table that question until the very end of this. And then let's, let's give some attention to talking about methods a little bit. So we'll, we'll finish this up. And then at the end for whoever wants to stay on, we'll discuss that question. Is that okay? Oh, that's perfect. I'll rename myself. Awesome. All right, Darcy, you had a, a comment. Yes, I did an answer to that question. Why is it important? Because President Nelson has told us that we're not going to survive mm. these last days without it. Yeah, so I'll come back to the question here in a second, but this is referring to what you just said. In the oh. coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. Now, it doesn't use the, the term personal revelation in there, but uh, that's certainly implied as part of that, right? The survival, we are in survival mode. If you, if you think about the, the uh, Lehi's dream and the way that that is set up, there is this, this path, and we might refer to it as the covenant path, right? And it, it's going down, it's a straight and narrow path, and, and there is this rod on that path. Well, right next to that path is a filthy river. And I don't think we remember the proximity of that filthy river to the path, you know, so that's why you have Elder Bednar talking so frequently about continually holding fast to that rod, which going back to the beginning of what we just talked about, remember that rod, everybody understands this is the word of God. And if you go to John chapter one, it tells us that the word is Jesus Christ. So we are continually holding fast to Jesus Christ on that covenant path but I, I also don't think that it's just like holding on like this because then we're just kind of sitting on the path we need to be moving holding on to that rod continually holding fast so that we are moving in the right direction and if we let go which by the way our students think that they can come and touch that rod every once in a while you know using christ as an emergency 911 call or whatever they come over and they, they do that. Well, now they're, they're not continually holding fast and they start to drift. And if they drift even a little bit, there used to be, it seems like more of uh, some, some land, some more, uh, some area where you could kind of get off of that covenant path for a little bit and, and not fall in the filthy river. But now the worldly weather just comes up and, and bumps them, you know, blows them just a tiny little bit, and they can fall into that filthy river so fast. And so when you're talking about surviving spiritually, I don't know how many of you watched any of those videos at Yellowstone with the, with the floods coming through and, and the erosion that took place on the side of the, the properties there, and to see them go into the water, um, I I totally see that happening. And I know that you guys do too with our youth and, and with every, with members of the church in general, that erosion is, is just eating away at any kind of an area there where you can afford to let go of that rod. And we just can't do that. And the reason why that's so important is because that's the medium in which we get the Holy ghost often. So we've got to be able to have the, the Holy ghost with us for that reason. Now that's, I'm sorry for going on, uh, a long diatribe there, but um, no, uh, thank you, <laughs> um, Sister Wade. You had a question or a comment. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just going going back to your original uh, question. Why is it important? Um, it's important because some of our students don't know that any of this is true. Um, Brother Goldhart told of an example where he was teaching a student and he, um, you know, he was concerned when he was reading some of the answers. And when he went back um, to the parent, the parent, no, my, my son's great. So he went to the bishop. No, no, he's the president of 
blah, blah, blah. And uh, Brother Goldheart just kept saying, interview him, interview him. And when they, when he did the interview, the young man didn't believe any of it was true. Mm. If you, you think of Joseph receiving that personal revelation, um, we all have to have it to know that father is there. We are his child and there is a real connection. And if you don't have the personal revelation, there's no real connection. Mm. Great comment. Sister Word, go ahead. I, I, I don't have anything. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Your hand was still up. <laughs> That's oh, my mistake. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, somebody else. Sister Rawlings, go ahead. I think um, it's also important for them to begin to recognize that things that they think they've done that are great um, maybe came to them because of personal revelation. They, um, when they're talking about things that they've accomplished or, or, you know, experiences that they've had and they've said, and then I did this. And it's like, what made you do that? It's important for them to recognize this isn't all you, you're talented and you're wonderful. <laughs> But that was revelation. That was that that moment where Heavenly Father had a hand in, in your life. And you need to, to stop a minute and recognize that. Mm. Love that. The action that goes with it. That's what we're trying to get them to do, right? Not just feel it, but act upon whatever they feel. Great comment. Sister Atkinson. It's always a task to get you to unmute, huh? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can okay. usually do that faster. Okay. Um, I think that it's kind of tricky for kids to um, recognize when the spirit is talking to them. And I think seminary is such a blessing in their life. They get an opportunity every day to practice. And, and it is so important for them to understand how they feel the spirit and how it speaks to them so that they can be successful adults. Let me just say one, one thing about what you just said. It's, it is critical to have them to practice this. Sometimes I've heard teachers say uh, in a class, now, did you feel that? Did you feel the spirit? And, um, and I would just caution you to, to consider doing that a little differently. Instead of asking them if they felt the spirit when you feel like it's there, um, just encourage them constantly to point out and recognize, make it a habit and do this daily in class. When you feel the spirit prompting you, when you feel the spirit, when you feel something, whatever that might be, would you just uh, make sure that you write it down personally? They may not do this all the time, but to raise their hand and say, you know, I just felt like you know, the spirit's telling me to do this or the spirits. I feel this because the spirits here, whatever, if they're, if they're the ones that are identifying it, they're the ones that are suggesting this is, this is what's occurring in the class, then it's going to be a whole lot easier for them to continue to recognize it and to practice that. Um, and you can have these discussions with your students periodically and, and maybe even have a, a moment at the end of class where you said, okay, let's just talk about or write down you know, what did the spirit invite you to do today? What did the Holy Ghost invite you to do? Or how did you feel as, as we were talking about some of these things? Because they think that they have to, they have to be crying to feel the spirit. When we went to, at FSY, we'll ask the question, you know, when's the last time that you felt the spirit? And oftentimes, even our counselors, our young single adults will identify some distant past experience where they were crying because of that. So um, I, I would, I would just you know, think about some different ways to help them to be able to recognize it a lot more organically rather than pointing out to them certain times where that's taking place. Sister Thompson, you had a, a comment. I was just going to say, um, kind of to add on what's already been said, I don't know about anybody else, but my life hasn't turned out the way I exactly had envisioned. And so I feel like when I was growing up, it was, there was a, like a certain exact pattern that was kind of taught, like you need to go to school, you need to go on a mission, you need to get married in the temple, you know, just kind of this perfect, perfect. Well, what happens when 
God has kind of a different peculiar plan for you. And if I wouldn't have been able to recognize the spirit, I, and know that he was speaking to me, I wouldn't have made the choices that have led to greater happiness, greater connection with my father in heaven, greater, um, a better instrument in his hands, if I would have never been able to recognize that. And so I think that's a big part of it is they, they're going to have their own mission where we've moved away from the, there's this one size fits all pattern in the gospel. And we've gone to a, you need to hear him pattern. And so I'm so grateful for that. And I think that's why we need to encourage it. Mm. Great comment. That brings us to uh, another thought by president Nelson, by the way, um, you, somebody asked what talks would be good to, to go to when, uh, learning about these things. The, the first one that I would send you to is this one by President Nelson, where he, it's Revelation for the Church, Revelation for Our Lives. It's April 2018. That's a great talk. I would encourage everybody to, to uh, devour that um, and just consider what, some of the, what are some of the things that the Spirit prompts you to be able to draw out from that, that maybe you could help your students understand. The second one um, so the revelation for the church revelation for our lives. The second one is this one. And there's a, this is a hear him general conference, April, 2020. And he mentions, well, I'll just read this to you while you're writing that down. If you want to, if you want to get that, uh, reference there, he says, we also hear him more clearly as we refine our ability to recognize the whisperings of the Holy ghost. It's never been more imperative to know how the Spirit speaks to you than right now. In the Godhead, the Holy Ghost is the messenger. He will bring thoughts to your mind which the Father and Son want you to receive. He's the comforter. He will bring a feeling of peace to your heart. He testifies of truth and will confirm what is true as you hear and read the word of the Lord. Notice the different ways. He's just like uh, Tiffany, just what she just said, that there's different ways for that to happen and he's pointing out many of those as we uh as he goes through and educates us on this and then he says i renew my plea for you to do whatever it takes to increase your spiritual capacity to receive personal revelation doing so will help you to know how to move ahead with your life what to do during times of crisis and how to discern and avoid the temptations and deceptions of the adversary and there's a little video um we maybe I'll share share it with you. It's about a minute long, that um, that he discusses this, and uh, and you could share that with your students. But let's do this for just a moment. Would would you think for a few minutes about examples in the scriptures where we learn about seeking for and or acting on personal revelation? I'll mention that again. Think for just a few moments about examples in the scriptures where we learn about seeking for and or acting on personal revelation. And if one comes to mind, um, and you can share a, a brief part of that or what you discovered, then uh, raise your hand. Sister Blue. Yeah, would you mind sharing what uh, came to your mind about that? Can't, hold on, you're you're muted. It just made me think about Queen Esther instantly, I guess, because of the students. I kind of feel like, you know, there, there are people too, right? And you have such a love for them and you're trying to protect them and you don't want them to be destroyed. And so what does she do? You know, she prays, she fasts, she has the people. So we ask the parents to help and we invite the students to do the same. And sometimes they're just not there yet, but at least they're still coming. And I do believe that even though they're coming, even if they're, you know, acting like they're asleep and they're still hearing, so they're still receiving something. Great, great thought. Yes. Sister Thompson. And then, uh, and then I'm going to invite um, Sister Gardner to share. <laughs> I was, I was just going to say the first one that came to my mind was brother of Jared, you know, where he, he had to build this boat. He didn't know how to build it. He had to light it. Yeah. They had to breathe. They had to direct. He had a lot of things that he had questions for. And so, and God kind of answered them in different ways. And so I like being able to see that breath in that story. I love that too, because there's a, there's a problem, right? And then the problem needs to be resolved and personal revelation is the way that that takes place. That's a great example 
Uh, Sister Gardner, I, you were asking about how to raise your hand. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, there's little, there's little uh, options there to be able to, to do that, but um, I'm looking to. I, I guess I'm not seeing them or something. I don't know. But I was just thinking of Nephi when he was commanded to go back with his brothers and get the brass plates. And he, you know, tried several ways, but he prayed about it and was led to do what he did. Great example. Sister Hoggard. Um, I was thinking about when Nephi heard about Lehi's dream and he didn't fully understand it. And then he went and prayed about it and was given the revelation for it. And mm -hmm. then also his interaction with his brothers after that, when they didn't understand it, but they didn't believe that God would teach them about it. So they did not ask. That's a great example too. Thank you, Kim. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did. Um, before Nephi became the I will go and do kid, um, <laughs> when Lehi first started preaching in Jerusalem and his life was in danger, he prayed to know if what Lehi was saying was true as well. And it's just this tiny little verse in there that, but you realize that's how it started. He, he wasn't sure about it either, but he did pray about it. And then he helped Sam to be at peace with it. I feel like that was a, such a good foundational thing for him so that he could then be the Nephi that we all glorify that goes and gets the plates and builds the boat and, um, and makes a bow and all of these things. So it, it started with his first prayer to, to be able to trust his dad. What a great thought. I mean, consider that. In fact, um, Brother Hill, why don't you go ahead and share and then I'm going to um, kind of wrap things up for us. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm thinking about Joseph Smith. He, you know, he read a scripture, he felt the spirit and acted on that. And then that leads me to thinking about the entire, almost the entirety of the doctrine and covenants, because that is all about having a question or feeling the spirit or, or having a spiritual concern and then acting upon that in a way that an answer came i mean i mean we have the church because of this as it exists today and it and it's still going on when we read these messages these uh or listen to and read the, the talks by, by president nelson and other general authorities again it's the same thing act they are acting on those things it, it is continuing to go on and i Sometimes I'm surprised when the Lord does answer my questions because it's like, oh, wow, he really is listening to me or paying attention or, or whatever. But I guess I shouldn't be surprised because this is the way he's always worked. Mm. Yeah, great thought. Um, I, I'm going to share with, um, this quote by Elder Bednar that Brother Webb shared in the, in the chat. And you guys can go see this. He says he was receiving revelation and he had no idea he was receiving revelation. So a revelation comes through Joseph to Oliver to tell him he'd been inspired and was receiving revelation. And now I tell thee these things that thou mayest know that thou hast been enlightened by the spirit of truth. That's Doctrine and Covenants section 615. So that's what I mean about we're in it, not just stopping to try and get it. The constant companionship of the spirit is the promise. It ought to be with it ought to be with us all of the time, not just, not every nanosecond, but if you and I are doing our best and we're not co committing serious transgression, then we can count on the Holy Ghost guiding us. That's I really appreciate you sharing that, Brother Webb, because I think it's, it's critical that we help our students understand that they probably are feeling the Holy Ghost a lot more than they think they are, that they're experiencing this. Uh, if, if they are on that covenant path, they might be making mistakes, but you know, we talk a lot about keeping our covenants. Um, everybody breaks them. Everybody breaks their covenants. We're all sinners, right? So I think it's important that our, our students understand it's, it's, it's not so, because they get these perfectionist syndromes where they have to do everything just right. And if they're not doing something right, then they just raise the right white flag and say, I'm bad. I'm, I'm terrible. I can't do this anymore. And then they, they tell themselves, I'm not receiving revelation. 
I'm not worthy to receive revelation. But if we help them to understand it's more about renewing their covenants. I mean, it's keeping them too, but they need to understand that renewal, that opportunity to renew their covenants every Sunday and to repent helps them to be able to keep the Holy Ghost with them, as it says in the sacrament prayer, always. They're swimming in it, right? That's kind of what, what we are helping them to understand. And then as they do that, and as we practice this, and as we notice what a lot of those examples were from the scriptures, they were about young people. In fact, and we can go to Samuel, right? Same thing um, in when we learned about Samuel and how young he was and, and he, he was not, it, it says in there that, uh, that he was not, he did not yet know the Lord. And I think that's true with a lot of our students that they're just getting to know him. They're just, this is a process. It might be a little messy. It might be a little chaotic, but it certainly is worth it. And, and if they put forth some of that effort, they're going to receive those, those experiences um, Sister Word and then Sister Larson, and then we'll we'll finish up. Um, I I I don't remember what the question originally was. Is <laughs> Sorry. In, no, no, no. Of seeking in the in the scriptures, mm -hmm. but I think it would be really important, if not if not me as the teachers, having somebody come in and share how they receive personal revelation. That's not in the class setting, mm. but to have somebody come in. And I, I would be, it would be me because it's too hard to get people to get up that early. But um, I, I think I didn't hear you say anything about it, but maybe that wasn't pertaining to what you originally asked. Sorry. No, that's okay. In fact, that's a, that'd be a great idea. You know, the, the whole point is it, we're, we're not just trying to get them to feel the Holy Ghost and experience personal revelation. We're trying to help them to understand how to act on it. Um, and so that sometimes- say that again that would come with the explanation what did you do with that with that feeling what did you do i mean that wouldn't wouldn't you have somebody say that because it's not so much that you get it but what do you, what, you it's like joseph smith he received the um the vision and the revelation but he didn't keep it to himself he he took the action and that's that's pretty much what our whole goal is as teachers is to show these kids how to take the action is what i'm i'm interpreting my calling yeah and and in these experiences the, the examples in the scriptures i think that's what you'll find that they are acting upon that the personal revelation and i think it's important to help them to understand that that's part of it right um right sister, sister larson go ahead on the question on why it's important for them to be able to receive personal revelation, our youth, indeed the whole church, but especially our youth, are facing serious challenges to what they've been taught and what they believe. And it's just not people making fun, but serious things that they hear and see and make people start to doubt. And if they don't have the ability to receive personal revelation, they can sink really fast. And, and uh, I think it was Elder Rasband saying how Satan was aggressive now instead of sneaky, going after to destroy. And you can see it everywhere. And these darling youth, they need to understand how to get that revelation because they will be facing challenges that they don't have answers for. Mm. Yeah, great, great thought. It, it's, it's critical. Um, I... I just want to say uh, thank you very much. By the way, Brother Webb is, is sharing with you in the chat the, um, the talk that he gleaned some of this from. It's a great discussion that Elder Bednar taught uh, teachers and administrators of seminaries and institutes um, back in 2020. And, and uh, by the way, I would encourage you to go watch it because just the method by which he does this is, is, is inspiring. Um, that's kind of what we do. And, and in some cases, you know, this is one of those things that we um, like just today, there's a lot of different directions that we could take this, but um, I really appreciate what you guys have shared to be able to um, help us all understand how we can do this a little bit better. And there will be more coming from your coordinators. You, you'll receive more information about this as we go, but 
certainly these references or these resources that we've uh, talked about today would be really good to go to. Let me just share one last video clip with you. Um, and and then uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up and, and address some other questions if you wanna stay on. Um, listen closely to what President Nelson says here. It has never been more imperative to know how the Spirit speaks to you than right now. He is the comforter. He will bring a feeling of peace to your heart. He testifies of truth and will confirm what is true as you hear and read the word of the Lord. I renew my plea for you to do whatever it takes to increase your spiritual capacity to receive personal revelation. Doing so will help you to know how to move ahead with your life, what to do during times of crisis, Notice the promise at the end of that, um, to be able to move ahead and have direction in your life. And I, I just want to testify to you that I, I know that's true. I know that you all know that, that that's true, that um, you know, receiving the re personal revelation is one thing, but recognizing it and, and understanding the power that can come from connecting with uh, Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father so often as the Holy Ghost testifies and comforts us, those, um, that is not just, as we talked about at the very beginning, it's not just a, a warm, fuzzy feeling that we should be able yeah. to go to and get every period, you know, periodically, but, but something that we should be experiencing all the time. And, or at least understand that it's available to us all the time. And the more we recognize that, and the more we help our students recognize that, that, the more the equipped that they're going to be able to be to to go out and and combat those things of the world they're going to to strengthen that grip on the iron rod so that they don't get blown over by that worldly weather as we talked about before um and i love jesus christ i'm grateful for for him and for the opportunity to to teach his youth and to associate with them and with all of you this is a, a great privilege to be with you and i appreciate you guys taking some time today to uh, spend with us. And hopefully this is something that will uh, benefit you as you uh, maybe review some of those resources and, and we'll make this available to you as well. So I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, can we get a, a closing prayer by, uh, is it Sister Weber or Weber? <laughs> it's Weber. Weber. It, yeah. Utah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Would you mind giving us a closing prayer? Not at all. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful to be able to meet together. We are grateful for Brother Haley and for his preparation for the thoughts that we've had. We're grateful that we have felt the spirit and have had inspiration. And we're grateful for the opportunity that we have to teach seminary. We pray that the things that we've thought of and that we will write down and, and act on them and implement them as as we as thou sees fit we pray that thou please bless us now as we go about our daily business that we will continue to strive to seek for thy spirit in our everyday life we love thee heavenly father and we say these things in the name of jesus christ amen 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 thank you uh we've got other trainings this this week i hope to see you on there but uh just to make sure that we don't neglect sister words question um, I want to come back to that. And you, your concern, it sounded like, was about having students have mobile devices and how they're going to not get distracted. Is that what I heard you say? Well, oh, oh look at this. somebody just sent me an email or look at this uh, Instagram I just got because they'll get notifications. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, because they're using their phones, how, how do you deal with that i mean is it noticeable do the kids yeah. i've never taught so i don't know do the kids it's noticeable. Are, it is noticeable we have a rule in our class that if we're not actively using them for an activity whether it's scripture reading or looking something up and sometimes we have them go on the internet because we're we're looking up exam they want them to find examples of something yeah. news or something like that but unless we're actively using them they're face down on the desk and um 
because we have two teachers in our room, the other one can circulate behind and see what's on their screens. The other thing is that the kids are really quick to tattle on each other. <laughs> like I'm trying to do the right thing. You're going to do the right thing too. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it, it's evident pretty quickly. I like that. Phones down. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a that's a really good, really good thing to do. I, I think it's important to help uh, students understand the rules of using electronic devices in class and reinforce those rules all the time. As you do that, then it gets easier. But, it, but you know, students are like cattle. They'll test the fences to see where it's all weakest. And so you just kind of have to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're, you have strong fences. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be critical or disciplinarians, so to speak. You just need to let them know where those expectations are. Sister Coles and Brother Hill. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have a discussion up front because this is something they're going to be dealing with in all areas of their life and learning how to discipline themselves with that technology. Because even at home, in the workplace, you know, just maybe open up a discussion about the benefits and the detriments of that little technology and how it can help their life and how it can hinder their life. And if they kind of come up with some of those suggestions on their own, just like when you start a class and have the kids come up with class rules, have them come up with the ideas of how can we use this technology appropriately in our class and let them generate those ideas. Then they'll have kind of more ownership of it than if you as a teacher say, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, that's excellent. Good thought, Brother Hill. Oh, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Uh, I agree with everything that especially Sister Coles just said. We've had pretty good my wife and I teach together she can't be here with us today she's at uh, her mother's house but um, we've generally had really good success with using um, using the technology using the cell phones um, it, it's funny that it, it, they've gotten so used to it in our class that one day last year my wife actually handed out made sure everybody had a paper copy of the scriptures and they were looking something up and she's always saying, do you know what this word means? Or do you know what that phrase means? And she always just, of course, on their phones, they can just tap it and, and, and they can get a definition. And she said, well, look that word up. And we had two or three of our kids that tapped on the physical page before they realized that, <laughs> oh, we can't do that. Um, but our, our youngest son is on a mission. And um, I mean, it, half of his MTC experience was online. Um, because he started a year ago, just as kind of COVID was kind of wrapping up and the MTCs were opening back up. And so much of his mission uh, has been using technology. And he, he was not real into technology. He did not have a Facebook profile or things like that. He, he's, he was very happy without that all through high school. And he had to create that to go on his mission because he had to have, a, you know, a, an online profile. But I've seen him as he's learning to use these tools over the last year, he is becoming much more effective as a missionary. So he's a big example to me because I'm still kind of resistant to a lot of the social media stuff myself. But, um, but I think it's very important that we help these students in, in these seminary classes to learn how to use this, learn how to use it appropriately. Are they going to misuse it sometimes? Absolutely. I mean, some, you know, a Snapchat's going to pop up and they're automatically going to check it. But most of our kids, even with two of us teaching, we don't really have to monitor very much. The, whoever's sitting next to them will be nudging them or, or whatever and saying, hey, don't do that. And we've gotten to the point this past year where we really, had, by the end of the year, we weren't having any problems at all with misuse of this. They also have their agency. And we talked about agency and at the beginning of the year last year with this and that yeah they can choose to be on Facebook or Snapchat or whatever else is out there during class and they can hide it from us if they want to that that's agency and so we're trying to help them learn how to you know use their agency to make the right choices so that's been our um, experience with this overall it's been a very good experience Okay, thank you. Love that. Sister Wade? 
Uh, well, I'm always the odd man out. I'm an online teacher. And one day I realized that I could be looking at them and they appear to be in contact with me and they could have another screen open on their computer and I don't know it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it, it was a real eye-opening experience for me to realize that, oh, you look like you're paying attention to me, but you may not be. And I, I you know, I use, I have them look things up too. I, I think it's important that they know how to, to find uh, talks, um, to answer questions that they have or um, to, and I, but I do worry. Now, this is a big concern for me and I'm a stupid one. Um, I taught early morning seminary for four and a half years. We did not have scriptures online because it was back in the 90s. They learned how to find, you know, something. I don't know that they've got their scriptures marked correctly when they're using, when I'm not with them. And I worry that, that they're not getting um, their doctrinal mastery scriptures marked correctly to get back to them. I know how to mark I know how to mark them, but I don't even know. I put them in a, a folder and I don't even know where the folder is later. So <laughs> that's a real big concern for me. I want to be sure that it's, you know, that when they're using the technology, they're using it correctly. And I'm probably not the one to teach them how um, because I don't know how to use it all that well. But yeah. Well, I would say this too, in conjunction with what you just said, is that it, we have to train ourselves. You know, we have to be trained in order to be able to help our students. So uh, we might need to practice some of those things. But on the on the flip side of that, we've got to train them. That's why seminary is like a practice session, you know, every single day for us to be able to say, okay, let's make sure that we know how to do this. And um, for you, Sister Wade, I know it's a weekly situation, not daily, but um, but, you know, giving two things is not just the practicing part, but helping them to engage. So, you know, I try and even with the Institute, I try and have certain things at intervals because I know their attention span is about eight seconds. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much, um, <laughs> not by much. And so I have to have certain activities or certain things that I'll do to engage them whether that's asking them a question to respond to, writing something down, you know, the mentee is, is one of those things, sharing something with somebody else, going to the scriptures. In other words, I'm, I'm trying to get them to do certain things. And by being active in those things, um, sometimes I, I know this is a sad thing, but sometimes I'm trying to distract them from all of the stuff that could be going on on their phones. Does that make sense? Um, so because we talk about them being distracted, uh, with those things, but I'm, I'm sometimes doing the opposite. And, uh, you know, I have, I have 50, 60 kids in my class and, and sometimes I don't have any idea what they're doing on their phones. And, uh, there's times where they'll start laughing about something. And I'm like, that wasn't a joke. That wasn't, I didn't say anything <laughs> that was funny. So, um, but you know, those things will occur, um, because the, just like we have discussed, they, they have their, their agency to be able to do that. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things that we can do to try and help them and, uh, not just train them on what they need to be learning about mobile devices or, or the gospel library or whatever, but also, um, methods in class that we can help them to not be distracted and on their phones. So sister Mora and then sister Larson. Um, kudos to our stake and to brother Anderson, who's actually given us training on our phones, um, and electronic uses, um, because that was something that I know I badly needed so that I could go back and use that, utilize that in my class in a whole bunch of different ways, things like Menti, things like QR codes, so they can go straight to a quote, um, and they're not hunting around on their phone and going other places and getting distracted. Um, so if we have supervisors in this group, that's a great, you know, in-service lesson is to, to work on that technology. I think the churches website is one of is vastly underutilized there is so much there to use um, that if we can get the kids engaged in a fraction of it they will learn it a thousand times faster than we do um, but it means that they can use it in ways we haven't thought of yet that and and then they become the teachers and so I think that's it's amazing if you can engage them on
even better, we can, uh, you know, invite them to share what they know about it. A lot of times they know there's students that know more about how to navigate through some of this than us. So they could, they could share, you know, if you have a question about a QR code thing or something like that, and, and it's not yeah. uh, coming down as far as training from the coordinators um, or the supervisors, then, you know, ask the students, they'll probably be able to tell you. A lot of times they, they know more about it than we do. So Shoof's? No, I didn't um, say that right. Think, thinking about kids and technology, um, I'm a big fan of teaching them about their agency. Look, you've got the power to choose. You could sit here and waste your time being on Facebook. But if you were going to be on Facebook, why in the world did you get dressed and show up here? You could have been on Facebook in your bed. It's true. You know? So I've, I reminded them at the beginning of last year, look, if you put your head down and sleep on purpose because you're in a fit of bad humor, you're wasting your time. It's not going to hurt any of us. Yeah. But if you're sick, stay in bed. If you bothered showing up, then make it worth your time. That's a great point. And I love what you said, too. Most of the time, my kids aren't getting messages because no one they know is awake <laughs> at that time of the morning. That's a good point. Sister Thompson. I just had a question. I am like so, so brand new. But what do you do when you have a mix? I, I like the advantages of technology, but what do you do when you have like a mixed class with a technology gap? Like you have some kids, most kids I know have phones these days that can do all those things. But I personally know two students, my own children, <laughs> that will be in my class that won't have access to all that stuff. So I'm just wondering how you deal with that if you are used to using QR codes and stuff and you have kids that don't have phones or not phones that do all this stuff. Well, I'll tell you, I think that there's, you bring up a really good point because there's usually going to be some, uh, well, I shouldn't say usually, sometimes you're going to have certain things that you do that uh, aren't going to apply to everybody. Um, I would, I would suggest that you, you know, for example, if they don't have phones that get them really good at using their, their uh, scriptures, their, <laughs> their paper scriptures. I mean, I, I still teach ones. from my paper scriptures. And so, um, you know, at FSY, I pulled them out and I, I told all of my, all the participants there, I said, I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but, but these are, these are the paper version of what you guys have on your phone. And um, of course they, they thought that was, you know, I was, I was, that was a dad joke, but um, anyway, I, I helped them to be able to see, okay, let's talk about what tools you need to be able to be successful. If we're doing some of these technology things, how can you uh, do something, you know, with the materials that you have, and maybe that's writing things down. Maybe that's, it can even be um, looking over your shoulder and having a partner help you and you do it together. There's a lot of different things that you can do that way to, to help them stay engaged, even if they don't have the electronic device. Does that help? Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. I just, I, I did realize though, after I said that they do have like iPad minis and stuff. So pro they can probably do almost all the same things that they can do on a phone with those. So yeah. Yeah, yeah I Absolutely. usually brought an iPhone, I mean, a iPad or something for that. So I have one student um, and he did have a phone by the end of the year. We were just using it so much as parents decided that that was something that he needed. Um, but yeah, we always brought an iPad or something for him to use. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's another thing too, is I don't want to, I don't want to make things difficult on parents, you know, uh, because if parents feel like, Hey, this is, I don't, this isn't right for my children or whatever, then I want to try and accommodate that the best that I can. So, you know, if you have an extra um, device or something that maybe they could use while they're there or, or, you know, other accommodations, I would encourage you to, to do that and not necessarily require something that way. Sister Larson? Um, I think this is probably being brought out in various ways. We all remember that when the prophet Joseph was asked, how do you govern your people? And he said to teach them correct principles and they govern themselves. Yeah. And I think that as we give our youth the opportunity, show them what we expect and let them govern themselves. They do have that free agency, but they're smart kids. And I think we give them that opportunity. It's kind of like the honor code, right? When you're on your phone, you can tell 
you know, when they're on their phone, you know, they're up this, but their eyes are down. There, there are those signs, but giving them that free agency, letting them know what is expected and then trusting them to do what's right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I call on students a lot. You know, mm-hmm. I don't do it like immediately because a lot of times, like if you say, uh, if you're asking them to do something and then you call on them, a lot of times they've not heard the instructions beforehand. So a lot right. of times I'll give them, I'll call on them and say, Hey, I'd like to hear from, I'd like to hear from Dane and Karen, then Tiffany and anybody else who has something after that. And as soon as you say their name, they're dialed in, they're connected. And, uh, yeah. and then you can give them the instructions and give them, you know, I'll just wait 60 seconds or whatever it is. And then they can share. Um, you do that enough and you'll train your students to watch for those types of things. So um, anyway, we could talk about some of these things forever, but uh, you guys are great. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining us and, and uh, have a great week. And we'll, we'll see you again at the next training. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You bet. Bye, Bye y'all.